Bhakti Sanskrit, Bhakti literally means attachment, participation, fondness for, homage, faith, love, devotion, worship, purity. In Hinduism, it refers to devotion to, and love for, a personal god or a representational god by a devotee. In ancient texts such as the Shvatashvatara Upanishad, the term simply means participation, devotion and love for any endeavor, while in the Bhagavad Gita, it connotes one of the possible paths of spirituality and towards moksha, as in Bhakti Marga, Bhakti in Indian religions is emotional devotionalism", particularly to a personal god or to spiritual ideas. The term also refers to a movement, pioneered by Alvars and Nayanas, that developed around the gods Vishnu Vishnavism, Brahma Brahmanism, Shiva Shivism, and Devi Shaktism in the second half of the first millennium CE. It grew rapidly in India after the 12th century in the various Hindu traditions, possibly in response to the arrival of Islam in India. Bhakti ideas have inspired many popular texts and saint poets in India. The Bhagavata Purana, for example, is a Krishna related text associated with the Bhakti movement in Hinduism. Bhakti is also found in other religions practiced in India, and it has influenced interactions between Christianity and Hinduism in the modern era. Nirguni Bhakti devotion to the divine without attributes is found in Sikhism, as well as Hinduism. Outside India, emotional devotion is found in some Southeast Asian and East Asian Buddhist traditions, and it is sometimes referred to as Bhati. Topic. Terminology The Sanskrit word bhakti is derived from the verb root bhaj, which means, to divide, to share, to partake, to participate, to belong to. The word also means, attachment, devotion to, fondness for, homage, faith or love, worship, piety to something as a spiritual, religious principle or means of salvation." The meaning of the term bhakti is analogous to but different from karma. Karma connotes emotional connection, sometimes with sensual devotion and erotic love. Bhakti, in contrast, is spiritual, a love and devotion to religious concepts or principles, that engages both emotion and intellection. Karen Pekhalis states that the word bhakti should not be understood as uncritical emotion, but as committed engagement. She adds that, in the concept of bhakti in Hinduism, the engagement involves a simultaneous tension between emotion and intellection. Emotion to reaffirm the social context and temporal freedom, intellection to ground the experience in a thoughtful, conscious approach. One who practices bhakti is called a bhakta. The term bhakti, in Vedic Sanskrit literature, has a general meaning of mutual attachment, devotion, fondness for, devotion to such as in human relationships, most often between beloved lover, friend-friend, king-subject, parent-child. It may refer to devotion towards a spiritual teacher guru as guru bhakti, or to a personal god, or for spirituality without form nirguna. .According to the Sri Lankan Buddhist scholar Sanath Nanayakara, there is no single term in English that adequately translates or represents the concept of bhakti in Indian religions. Terms such as, "...devotion, faith, devotional faith." represent certain aspects of bhakti, but it means much more. The concept includes a sense of deep affection, attachment, but not wish because, "...wish is selfish, affection is unselfish." Some scholars, states Nanayakara, associate it with sadha Sanskrit, sraddha, which means, "...faith, trust or confidence." 
However, bhakti can connote an end in itself, or a path to spiritual wisdom. The term bhakti refers to one of several alternate spiritual paths to moksha, spiritual freedom, liberation, salvation in Hinduism, and it is referred to as bhakti marga or bhakti yoga. The other paths are Jnana Marga, path of knowledge, Karma Marga, path of works, Raja Marga, path of contemplation and meditation. The term bhakti has been usually translated as devotion in orientalist literature. The colonial era authors variously described bhakti as a form of mysticism or primitive religious devotion of lay people with monotheistic parallels. However, modern scholars state, "...devotion", is a misleading and incomplete translation of bhakti. Many contemporary scholars have questioned this terminology, and most now trace the term bhakti as one of the several spiritual perspectives that emerged from reflections on the Vedic context and Hindu way of life. Bhakti in Indian religions is not a ritualistic devotion to a god or to religion, but participation in a path that includes behavior, ethics, mores and spirituality. It involves, among other things, refining one's state of mind, knowing God, participating in God, and internalizing God. Increasingly, instead of devotion, the term participation is appearing in scholarly literature as a gloss for the term bhakti. David Lorenzen states that bhakti is an important term in Sikhism and Hinduism. They both share numerous concepts and core spiritual ideas, but bhakti of nirguni, devotion to divine without attributes, is particularly significant in Sikhism. In Hinduism, diverse ideas continue, where both saguni and nirguni bhakti devotion to divine with or without attributes or alternate paths to spirituality are among the options left to the choice of a Hindu. History the Upanishads The last of three epilogue verses of the Shvatashvatara Upanishad, dated to be from 1st millennium BCE, uses the word bhakti as follows This verse is one of the earliest use of the word bhakti in ancient Indian literature, and has been translated as, "...the love of God." Scholars have debated whether this phrase is authentic or later insertion into the Upanishad, and whether the terms bhakti and deva meant the same in this ancient text as they do in the modern era. Max Muller states that the word bhakti appears only once in this Upanishad, that too in one last verse of the epilogue could have been a later addition and may not be theistic as the word was later used in much later Sandilya Sutras. Grierson as well as Karras note that the first epilogue verse 6.21 of the Shvatashvatara Upanishad is also notable for its use of the word deva prasada, devaprasada grace or gift of God, but add that deva in the epilogue of the Shvatashvatara Upanishad refers to pantheistic Brahman, and the closing credit to sage Shvatashvatara in verse 6.21 can mean gift or grace of his soul." Scholarly consensus sees Bhakti as a post-Vedic movement that developed primarily during the epics and Puranas era of Indian history. The Bhagavad Gita is the first text to explicitly use the word, Bhakti, to designate a religious path, using it as a term for one of three possible religious approaches. The Bhagavata Purana develops the idea more elaborately, while the Shvatashvatara Upanishad presents evidence of Guru Bhakti devotion to one spiritual teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Bhakti movement 
The Bhakti movement was a rapid growth of Bhakti, first starting in the later part of 1st millennium CE, from Tamil Nadu in southern India with the Saiva Nayanas and the Vainava Alvars. Their ideas and practices inspired Bhakti poetry and devotion throughout India over the 12th–18th century CE. The Alvars, those immersed in God, were Vaishnava poet saints who wandered from temple to temple singing the praises of Vishnu. They established temple sites is one and converted many people to Vishnavism. Like the Alvars the Saiva Nayana poets were influential. The Tiramurai, a compilation of hymns by 63 Nayana poets, is still of great importance in South India. Hymns by three of the most prominent poets, Apar 7th century CE, Kampantar 7th century, and Sundara 9th century, were compiled into the Tevaram, the first volumes of the Tiramurai. The poet's itinerant lifestyle helped create temple and pilgrimage sites and spread devotion to Shiva. Early Tamil Shiva Bhakti poets are quoted the Black Yajurveda. The Alvas and Nayanas were instrumental in propagating the Bhakti tradition. The Bhagavata Purana's references to the South Indian Alvar saints, along with its emphasis on Bhakti, have led many scholars to give it South Indian origins, though some scholars question whether this evidence excludes the possibility that Bhakti movement had parallel developments in other parts of India. Scholars state that the Bhakti movement focused on the gods Vishnu, Shiva, Shakti, and other deities, that developed and spread in India, was in response to the arrival of Islam in India about 8th century CE, and subsequent religious violence. This view is contested by other scholars. The Bhakti movement swept over East and North India from the 15th century onwards, reaching its zenith between the 15th and 17th century CE. Bhakti poetry and ideas influenced many aspects of Hindu culture, religious and secular, and became an integral part of Indian society. It extended its influence to Sufism, Christianity, and Jainism. Sikhism was founded by Nanak in the 15th century, during the Bhakti movement period, and scholars call it a Bhakti sect of Indian traditions. The movement has traditionally been considered as an influential social reformation in Hinduism, and provided an individual focused alternative path to spirituality regardless of one's birth caste or gender. Postmodern scholars question this traditional view and whether the Bhakti movement were ever a social reform or rebellion of any kind. They suggest Bhakti movement was a revival, reworking and recontextualization of ancient Vedic traditions. <laughs> Types and classifications Bhakti Yoga The Bhagavad Gita, variously dated to have been composed in 5th to 2nd century BCE, introduces Bhakti Yoga in combination with Karma Yoga and J. Nana Yoga, while the Bhagavata Purana expands on Bhakti Yoga, offering nine specific activities for the Bhakti Yogi. Bhakti in the Bhagavad Gita offered an alternative to two dominant practices of religion at the time, the isolation of the sannyasin and the practice of religious ritual. Bhakti yoga is described by Swami Vivekananda as, "...the path of systematized devotion for the attainment of union with the Absolute." In various chapters, including the twelfth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes Bhakti Yoga as one of the paths to the highest spiritual attainments. In the sixth chapter, for example, the Gita states the following about Bhakti Yoga. Shandilya and Narada produced two important Bhakti texts, the Shandilya Bhakti Sutra and Narada Bhakti Sutra. 
they define devotion, emphasize its importance and superiority, and classify its forms. According to Ramana Maharishi, states David Frawley, bhakti is a surrender to the divine with one's heart. It can be practiced as an adjunct to self inquiry, and in one of four ways. Atma Bhakti, devotion to the one's Atma, Supreme Self. Ishvara Bhakti, devotion to a formless being, God, Cosmic Lord. Ishta Devata Bhakti, devotion to a personal God or Goddess. Guru Bhakti, devotion to Guru. Topic: <laughs> Bhagavata Purana and Navaratnamalika. The Navaratnamalika garland of nine gems, nine forms of bhakti are listed: one, sravana, listening to ancient texts; two, kirtana, praying; three, smarana, remembering teachings in ancient texts; four, padasavana, service to the feet; five, archana, worshiping; six, namaskar or vandana, bowing to the divine; seven, dasya, service to the divine; eight, sakayatva, friendship with the divine; and 9 Atma Nivedana self surrender to the divine the Bhagavata Purana teaches 9 similar facets of bhakti topic <laughs> bhavas traditional hinduism speaks of 5 different bhavas or effective essences in this sense, bhavas are different attitudes that a devotee takes according to his individual temperament to express his devotion towards God in some form. The different bhavas are Santa, placid love for God Dasya, the attitude of a servant Sakya, the attitude of a friend Vatsalya, the attitude of a mother towards her child Madhura, the attitude of a woman towards her lover. Several saints are known to have practiced these bhavas. The 19th century mystic, Ramakrishna, is said to have practiced these five bhavas. The attitude of Hanuman towards Lord Rama is considered to be of Dasya bhava. The attitude of Arjuna and the shepherd boys of Vrindavan towards Krishna is regarded as Sakya bhava. The attitude of Radha towards Krishna is regarded as Madhura Bhava. The attitude of Yashoda, who looked after Krishna during his childhood is regarded as Vatsalya Bhava. Kaitanya Karitamta mentions that Mahaprabhu came to distribute the four spiritual sentiments of Raha Loka, Dasya, Sakya, Vatsalya, and Sringara. Sringara is the relationship of the intimate love. Topic. Related practices in other world religions Devotionalism, similar to Bhakti, states Michael Pasquier, has been a common form of religious activity in world religions throughout human history. It is found in Christianity, Islam, Buddhism and Judaism. Buddhism Bhakti called Bhati in Pali language has been a common aspect of Buddhism, where offerings and group prayers are made to images such the images of the Buddha and the Bodhisattvas, or to deities such as wrathful deities. Carol Werner notes that Bhakti has been a significant practice in Theravada Buddhism, and states there can be no doubt that deep devotion or bhakti, bhati does exist in Buddhism and that it had its beginnings in the earliest days. According to Sri Lankan scholar Indamathi Karunaratna, the meaning of bhati changed throughout Buddhist history, however. In early Buddhism, such as in the text Theragatha, bhati had the meaning of faithful adherence to the Buddhist religion, and was accompanied with knowledge. In later text tradition, however, the term developed the meaning of an advanced form of emotional devotion. 
Examples of the latter include the veneration of Buddha Amitabha and those in the Sadharmapundarika Sutra. This changed the meaning of Buddhist devotion to a more person-centered sense, similar to a theist sense used in Hindu scriptures. This sense of devotion was no longer connected with a belief in a religious system, and had little place for doubt, contradicting the early Buddhist concept of sadha. Sada did not exclude reasonable doubt on the spiritual path, and was a step in reaching the final aim of developing wisdom, not an end in itself. In early Buddhism, states Sanath Nanayakara, the concept of taking refuge to the Buddha had the meaning of taking the Buddha as an ideal to live by, rather than the later sense of self surrender. But already in the commentary to the Abhidhamma text Pugalapanati, it is mentioned that the Buddhist devotee should develop his sadha until it becomes badi, a sense not mentioned in earlier texts and probably influenced by the Hindu idea of bhakti. There are instances where commentator Buddhahosa mentions taking refuge in the Buddha in the sense of mere adoration, indicating a historical shift in meaning. Similar developments took place with regard to the term puja honor and the role of the Buddha image. In Mahayana Buddhism, the doctrine of the trikaya three bodies and the devotion towards bodhisattvas all indicating a shift of emphasis toward devotion as a central concept in later Buddhism. In later faith oriented literature, such as the Avadanas, faith is given an important role in Buddhist doctrine. Nevertheless, faith is discussed in different contexts than devotion bhakti. bhakti is often used disparagingly to describe acts of worship to deities, often seen as ineffective and improper for a Buddhist. Also, bhakti is clearly connected with a person as an object, whereas sraddha is less connected with a person, and is more connected with truthfulness and truth. Sraddha focuses on ideas such as the working of karma and merit transfer. Nevertheless, effective devotion is an important part of Buddhist practice, not only in Mahayana Buddhism. According to Winston King, a scholar on Theravada Buddhism in Myanmar, warm, personalized, emotional. Bhakti has been a part of the Burmese Buddhist tradition apart from the monastic and lay intellectuals. The Buddha is treasured by the everyday devout Buddhist, just like Catholics treasure Jesus. The Orthodox teachers tend to restrain the devotion to the Buddha, but to the devout Buddhist populace, a very deeply devotional quality was and remains a part of the actual practice. This is observable, states King, in Multitudes of Pagoda Worshippers of the Buddha Images and the offerings they make before the image and nowhere else. Another example is the worship of the bodhisattvas and various deities in Tibetan and other traditions of Buddhism, including the so-called wrathful deities. <laughs> <laughs> Jainism Bhakti has been a prevalent ancient practice in various Jaina sects, wherein learned Tithankara Jina and human gurus have been venerated with offerings, songs, and Arati prayers. Jainism participated in the Bhakti school of medieval India, and has a rich tradition of Bhakti literature, Stavan, though these have been less studied than those of the Hindu tradition. The Avasyaka Sutra of Jains includes, among ethical duties for the devotee, the recitation of hymns of praise to the Trithankaras as the second obligatory action. It explains this bhakti as one of the means to destroy negative karma. According to Paul Dundas, such textual references to devotional activity suggests that bhakti was a necessary part of Jainism from an early period. According to Jeffrey Long, along with its strong focus on ethics and ascetic practices, the religiosity in Jainism has had a strong tradition of bhakti or devotion just like their Hindu neighbors. The Jain community built ornate temples and prided in public devotion for its fordmakers, saints and teachers. 
Ab Haseka, festival prayers, community recitals and Murti Puja rituals before an image are examples of integrated bhakti in Jain practice. See also Bhakti movement Novena, devotional worship to the icon of Mary, Christ or a saint in Christianity over nine successive days or weeks Kavana, intention, devotion during prayer in Judaism Metta Sikhism <laughs>